Today, I'm going to talk about the true nature of decisions and freedom. Welcome to Missing the Mark, where we look for meaning in strange places. I'm Christopher. So I wanted to talk about uh, the subject. It's really in a sense of freedom, but it's an, a proper understanding of what decisions are gives you a proper understanding of freedom. That a problem that a lot of people um, have is due to a mistake that they make in understanding the nature of freedom. That people understand freedom to mean the, um, roughly speaking, the ability to be in a position to make a decision. That, that your freedom consists in that making of a decision where you have alternatives and then you make a choice between these alternatives. And the problem this leads to is that the moment you actually make a decision, you have eliminated the possibility of making the decision. Because like, if you choose to do one thing or choose to do another, you are, you no longer have the freedom to choose again. So like, you know, say you want to get in the pool, uh, you're considering jumping in the pool or not jumping in the pool. Well, at the moment you can freely choose between these two alternatives. The moment you jump, well, at this point you can't freely choose anymore. While you're in the air, now gravity takes over, you no longer have a choice, you are committed, you cannot choose between these two alternatives because you have foreclosed one of the possibilities. And then once you're in the pool, it's impossible to choose to not jump into the pool because there you are. Now you can choose at this point to get out, etc. Um, the, the point is not that you are eternally bound now forever within this pool. The point is that you are, in the making of a decision, you foreclose the possibility of making that same decision over again the moment you are actually acting on the decision. And until such time as you have acted on the decision, you haven't actually made the decision. You haven't, you know, until you are committed, you haven't actually made it because you can freely change your mind again. And so there's no meaningful sense in which you actually made the decision that first time around. So if you go like this one, no, um, this one, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, that, no, you haven't made a decision. You haven't made five decisions in a row. You've made no decisions. You, you merely stated that you made a decision and then immediately canceled it out before you actually made the decision. Well, here's the thing. So, so this leads people into that sort of decision paralysis where like the moment you commit to anything, now you don't have freedom anymore. And the really extreme version of this that I see is in parenthood. Because parenthood lasts for a very long time and it takes a tremendous amount of your time and a tremendous amount of your effort. And so when you decide to become a parent, the, in, here I'll talk in a really proper sense, we're like, okay, I, I, it is, you know, I should be a parent. Well, then you have to go and find a mate, a husband or a wife. And then you, the two of you will then have children. And now for the next 20, 30 years, you'll, you know, for the next 20 years, roughly. And, you know, through, through the rest of your life, you'll be a parent, though not in the same sense by any means, especially like once they, they themselves hit an adult age. But at the same time, like until they're an adult, you have a tremendous amount of time and effort committed into them. And you will always be making yourself available to them to help them in whatever way you can, even when they're an adult and you're older. Um, so like for the rest of your life, there are a lot of possibilities that become foreclosed, a lot of them temporarily and some of them, you know, somewhat permanently. Like it would be a very selfish thing as the parent of an adult but young child to deprive them of grandchildren for their children and instead decide you want to go and spend the rest of your life in a research base in Antarctica. I mean, that would be a little bit difficult, to do, but, but like, you know, I, I want to, you know, live on a desert island in the Pacific. It, that would be a very selfish thing. You can't really choose that sort of action. Like, even though your children are adult, there's still possibilities for closed. Okay, so does this mean that once you make this, you are not free? And the answer is no. You aren't free to make nearly as many choices between alternatives. But here's the thing. The execution of the decision is the real substance of the freedom of that decision. So the, my freedom to read a book, like when I decide to read a book, I am not the, the reading of, you know, for each word and each page throughout the entirety of the reading of it is my decision to read the book. And it is only in the reading of the book that my decision, it, that's the substance of my decision to read that book. So that as I am reading it, I am realizing the freedom I have to execute this decision. And so 
while this, you know, reading forecloses dancing, like while I am reading this book, I am not dancing. So I have cut off this other possibility. But the thing is, I'm not sitting here without any possibilities open to me. What I'm doing is realizing the fullness of my decision to read this book in like manner for parenting throughout the many years in which you have a lot less time. You are, however, realizing that decision to be a parent. You are fulfilling the freedom that you had and that you have to be a parent. And so you are entirely free as long as, long as you are continuing to choose the thing. As long as you are continuing to direct your will to the execution of this decision throughout the days, weeks, months, years that you are executing this thing, it is all one very large, very uh, decision full of being for each moment added to it that you are continuing to will this choice, that you're giving up lots of other things, but you are continuing to choose this thing that you are doing, and you are always free to continue to choose the thing that you have committed yourself to. So on the one hand, yeah, you don't have, uh, there are a lot fewer decisions you're going to make, like, oh, am I gonna, I don't know, do people go out clubbing? I've never gone out clubbing. Um, but, you know, you could go out clubbing tonight, or I could read a book, or I could go dancing, or I could uh, go to the archery range, or I could, um, you know, I, I don't know, you know, knit. Um, except for clubbing, those are all my hobbies. I, I kind of meant to just have a wide variety. Anyway, um, not not hobbies. I, I haven't knitted in a while. It doesn't go as well with young children as you would think. Anyway, the um, they're, they're a little bit like... Hey, cats notoriously are bad for knitting because they love to play with yarn. And um, little kids actually are less compatible with knitting than you would... Well, if you have any. Uh, they... they are exactly as incompatible with knitting as you would think. Anyway, a little bit of a surprise to me. Not a great shock. So, you know, that one that one's definitely on hold. Um, anyway, point being, um, and, and it's actually to some degree an example. Like, you know, so like it's incompatible. And so I don't really get to choose to, to knit in a lot of circumstances. Because, like, I mean, children need me. They need freedom. They need interaction. They, you know, um, I'm their father. So, like, I'm their indoor jungle gym for the younger ones. Um... And so on, and it's, um, I, I mean, there are also other trade-offs, etc., that, that I make. Like, I, I could fit knitting into my life at portions if I really wanted to, but, you know, and I work it out. Um, you know, children are one of the main reasons that I give it up. But that's me executing on that decision to be a parent. It's still me realizing my freedom because in the giving up of, you know, say, the knitting for the time being. You know, someday I take up knitting again. Um, but in the giving up of the knitting... I am realizing the being of the parent that my will is directed towards to be a better parent than I would be if I were engaged only in this activity for myself instead by you know allocating my time differently and giving of it to my children I am realizing that freedom to in that way be the better parent and so it's a thing it, it applies far far more you see the same thing like in religious vocations where, where people will take a vow of celibacy and you know there's all they give up being parents that's, I mean, that's what they're giving up um, in that vow of celibacy. Because a vow of celibacy, by the way, is a vow to never marry. Um, everyone's supposed to be chaste. If you're not married, being chaste means being continent or, or not engaging in sexual activity. Um, if you are married, uh, sexual activity can be chaste. It, it's also possible to be unchaste within marriage, of course. Um, but uh, so the, the thing they're giving up is not actually, it's not really that they're giving up, um, you know, the act of copulation. It's that they're giving up having a family. They are giving up having a spouse. That's that's what the vow actually um, is. And so it is, uh, in the same thing, the execution of their vows throughout their life is the realization of their freedom. They are not, bind in a proper understanding, they're not binding themselves, but rather they are executing on one truly enormous decision. And they are bringing this decision into fullness and into fulfillment. And so every moment that they will toward this end, they are participating in that freedom to bring about this decision. And so that's the thing about freedom. Freedom is not the deciding between alternatives. Freedom really consists of the, uh, the bringing about of a decision over time, bringing it into existence, into being. And that's really what freedom is. That's also, incidentally, why freedom 
um, the, the, the rights, I'm sorry, that's why rights um, necessarily come from responsibilities, incidentally, because the right is, uh, negative rights, I mean, like, like the, uh, the right not, not to be interfered with, they all naturally derive from responsibilities because in order to fulfill the responsibility, there are things that you require in order to be able to do this. And so you need the freedoms from things, the, the right to have things not interfere with you so that you can actually bring about your responsibilities into fulfillment and bring the execution of them into existence. And so that is the proper way to understand decisions and freedom is that it's not all about the moment. It's not all about um, the, the hesitation between two things or, or the ability to pick one of them. The picking of them doesn't really matter. That's not really much of anything. It's the execution of the choice that is the real freedom, that is the real decision, the real thing. That's where stuff actually becomes, well, real. Um, that's where things actually take on being. And this is where you are contributing to the act of creation. And so that's where real freedom actually is, is in the execution, it's in the follow through, it's in the actual doing of the thing. And that's why a person who has very few options can be phenomenally free, because as long as they're capable of following through on the decision, of bringing that decision into the fullness of being, they have all the freedom that they need because they're able to do the thing that they are currently doing. They're able to do the thing that they are willing. So until next time, may you hit everything you aim at. If you like this video, then clicking the like button, according to YouTube, will make them more likely to recommend it to others. If you know anyone who might get something out of this video, then it would be kind to share it with them or just share it on social media in general. And if you'd like to see future videos of mine, you can subscribe. And uh, if you're not in the habit of checking your subscriptions page regularly, then I suggest clicking the notification bell and setting that to always, because otherwise uh, subscribing to a channel basically just sort of like gives YouTube a hint that maybe it should consider recommending these videos to you, possibly at some point, if they think so. It's a funny world we live in. God bless.